Thank you for watching NBC2 News Now, your 24-hour news and weather station. I'm Andrea Hubble. Here are the top stories in the news right now. One of the Southwest Florida's most wanted criminals is finally off the streets tonight after law enforcement found him hiding out with his girlfriend. Bruce Martin of Fort Myers was arrested by U.S. Marshals. He was on the run for several weeks. Martin was originally arrested back in April for selling cocaine but was wanted again for violating his probation. His girlfriend, Johanna Del Rosa, was also arrested. Tonight, both are in Henry County Jail. Right now, police are looking for the driver who hit, who hit and killed a pedestrian. Investigators say 68-year-old Thomas DeSoto was hit by a car near Fowler and Simpson Streets in Fort Myers. Witnesses say several people saw what happened, including children. They tell NBC2 they want to see the person responsible in handcuffs. Uh, I just thought it was crazy that someone had actually hit somebody and take off and not, I don't know to what they did, you know, I mean, I really wish that they would, you know, come forward and, you know, own up to what they did. Tonight, police are looking for a four door sedan. It's either gold or brown in color. Detectives say it should have major damage on the front and on its windshield. Anyone with information contact FMPD. A pilot was forced to make an emergency landing in Florida Everglades. Investigators say three licensed pilots were on board this single engine plane to conduct training operations. All three walked away without injuries. Tonight, the FAA is investigating. A St. Louis area community is outraged after a teen is shot and killed by a police officer during an uprising with neighbors. The shooting happened just after noon Saturday. Officers from 15 departments were on scene during the outburst. Investigators say the teen was shot after a round of gunfire from the neighbors. Police haven't said who fired the shots or why. We'll be following this story as the investigation continues. No word on whether a Miami area shooting is being deemed a hate crime. An Orthodox Jewish rabbi was shot and killed while walking to a North Miami Beach temple. Police say 60-year-old Joseph Raxon was approached by two young males. There was some sort of argument and Raxon was shot. The suspects took off. Police were unable to get a good description of the shooters. Now to a developing situation happening overseas. President Obama says the first of many airstrikes against ISIS fighters in Iraq were successful. Humanitarian drops to refugees in northern Iraq are also underway. Tonight, President Obama is warning the mission would not be a quick one, but vowed no U.S. boots will touch the ground. NBC's Dan Zinneman picks up our coverage. For a second day, U.S. warplanes and a Predator drone launched airstrikes against rebel fighters in northern Iraq. So far, these strikes have successfully destroyed arms and equipment that ISIL terrorists could have used against Erbil. The airstrikes are also aimed at protecting the tens of thousands of Yazidi religious refugees forced to flee the fighting and now surrounded by militants in the Sinjar mountain range. American aircraft are positioned to strike ISIL terrorists around the mountain to help forces in Iraq break the siege and rescue those who are trapped there. Part of the mission, delivering tons of food and thousands of gallons of water to the starving refugees. But analysts say these strikes may not be enough to beat back ISIS fighters who since January have taken over a wide swath of Iraq and Syria and recently launched attacks against neighboring countries. Fundamentally, this is not going to change the tide in Iraq. It will take much more on the part of Iraqis and likely the U.S to do that and push ISIS back. President Obama insists that more will not include U.S. troops on the ground. Ultimately, only Iraqis can ensure the security and stability of Iraq. The United States can't do it for them, but we can and will be partners in that effort. An effort that some fear may turn a limited air campaign into a long-term military commitment. Dan Sheneman, NBC News. It's a situation we'll be continuing to follow here at NBC2. Count on us for both updates online and on air. Take a look at this. Crews pulled this vehicle from the wall of a Salvation Army church off McGregor Boulevard in Fort Myers. Family members of the driver say she was alone and was able to get out of the car just fine. They claim her brakes stopped working. Instead of driving into the intersection, she was forced to turn into the lawn, crashing into this church. Any other day, but today, it could have been bad and could have been a loss of life. Right now, it's just bricks and mortar, and uh, we'll be able to patch it up. No one was in the building at the time of the crash. Tomorrow's service will be held at the Red Shield Lodge on Edison Avenue at 11 o'clock. 
Well, a child was bitten by a shark while swimming at a Brevard County beach. Our Central Florida affiliate tells us a 12 year old girl was bitten at Lori Wilson Park in Cocoa Beach. She was bitten on her right foot and taken to a nearby hospital. Count on NBC2 for new developments. And we're looking ahead to when a final policy will be presented on changes to fire drills in Lee County Schools. NBC2 investigators expose flaws in the system. The new policy will require two fire drills with the first week of schools. All reports must be logged into an online database. There's a public hearing happening Tuesday. You can also count on NBC2 for that coverage. And new tonight, NBC2 is hearing 911 calls made just moments after a nine-year-old Central Florida boy was bitten by an alligator. And he was crawling up the shore, screaming, crying, and the gator bites all over his back and crashes. We first told you about this story Thursday when the child was bit near a lake south of Orlando. Investigators say James Barney was riding his bike around the lake and decided to take a dip. But the area he was in was labeled a non-swimming zone. Tonight, he's recovering from about 30 bite marks. And I didn't know what happened. I reached down to go grab it, and I felt its jaw, I felt its teeth, and I didn't know what to do. Poor guy. Hospital workers even found one of the gator's teeth in his leg. Right now, doctors say he's in good condition. New from Collier County, deputies say an inmate used a stolen credit card to post her bond. Crystal Stevens was arrested for a petty theft and posted bond the following day. That's when her cellmate noticed her debit card was missing. Authorities found out Stevens stole the card and used it to get out of jail. She's now charged with grand theft and fraud. Remember, you can count on NBC2 for the latest information from around the world running at the bottom of your screen. You can log on 24 hours a day to NBC-2.com. I'm Andrea Hubble. Thanks for watching. Stay connected on air, online, and on the go. Everywhere you are, count on NBC2 first. Thank you for watching NBC2 News Now. I'm Andrea Hubble. We have a happy birthday in order for an American icon we know all too well, Smokey the Bear. His message of wildfire prevention has been around for 70 years now, but the way it's delivered has changed through time. NBC2's Hallie Jackson reports. Smokey the Bear. Smokey Bear's image has evolved through the years spanning generations but through it all his message has remained the same because everybody knows that he's the fire preventing bear but these days he's adapting his message to a new medium online from smoky selfies to post grammy popularity and bear hug hashtags smoky simply seems more approachable just as he went from print and radio to television, he's now moving online because he has to be where the audience is. It all began in 1944. Hello there, folks. This is Smokey. Smokey's named after New York firefighter Smokey Joe Martin, who was hurt during a 1922 fire rescue. And there was an actual Smokey bear. In 1950, a bear survived a wildfire by climbing a tree, becoming the Smokey mascot. Over the years, with more and more wildfires, the campaign widened its focus. Almost all of us know that slogan and this face, right, Smokey? The Ad Council says 96% of Americans recognize Smokey Bear, but because most wildfires are started by people, like the one at this forest almost five years ago, Smokey's handlers are not letting up on this crucial campaign. Western states are now dealing with the worst wildfire season in decades. While lightning and severe drought sometimes contribute, statistics show humans are to blame for nine out of ten wildfires. The Forest Service is raising awareness by throwing Smokey a birthday party. Surprise! But be sure to skip the candles. Hallie Jackson, NBC News, Los Angeles. 
More people are visiting Disney World. The Orlando theme park is reporting an 8% increase in revenue during the second quarter. Economists say it's a sign that Americans are spending more and going on vacations. Tonight, Southwest Florida small business owners are asking for your support. Dozens of owners are taking part in the Buckler's Craft Fair. It's happening this weekend at the Lee Civic Center. Shoppers can get their hands on homemade art, perfumes, purses, and even jewelry. Some say fairs like this keep your money here at home. I think that show like this gives uh, local crafters and small businesses an opportunity to um, get more exposure, to get our names out there because it's a, it's a tough world out here trying to um, open up your own business. The event wraps up Sunday. Doors open at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Six bucks for adults and teens. Kids are free. Well, you're watching NBC2 News Now. And remember, for breaking news, weather, information, and news online, you can log on 24 hours a day to NBC-2.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Andre Hubble. Stay connected on air, online, and on the go. Everywhere you are, count on NBC2 first.